Imagine a model that has millions of polygons and you just drop it right into Unreal Engine 5. No more retopologizing, just drop the raw file in. With Nanite, this will work. Nanite can handle the obscene amount of polygons you throw at it. You're only limited to the screen resolution. It's so fast that running 120 million polygons on the screen is just as fast as running a 12 polygon cube. With Nanite, the only limitation comes from the screen resolution, and you're no longer limited by the number of polygons of the static meshes in your scene. Now we'll compare what it's like with and without Nanite inside Unreal Engine 5.3. This will demonstrate the improvements that Epic Games has made to their engine with their new Nanite system. You'll get to see what life was like before Nanite was born. I'm going to drop that same earthquake model into UE5 and disable Nanite for this model. The model has baked in vertex colors that I want to keep, although I'm not going to be using them in this video. ZBrush has different unit scales from different from UE, so I'm going to multiply the model by 100, otherwise it'd be too small for us to see. These are the import settings that I used. The import took around 3 minutes, so I did skip this part. Drop the model into the viewport. We'll enable the statistics in the viewport so we can see the FPS. So I'm trying to find the details and the FPS option in here. For some reason, I, I couldn't find the details right away. So you see me struggling with the mouse. We can look at the FPS and see how the FPS varies as I pan and zoom in the viewport. This is a huge drop compared to what I showed earlier in this video when Nanite was enabled for this model in UE5, which reached up to 120 frames per second in comparison to this 85 frames per second that it, it'll never go past 85 when Nanite is turned off in this case. Now let's take this even further and I'll multiply Earthquake five times to exaggerate the latency. You can see this gets worse in the FPS. This is a huge drop compared to what I showed earlier in the video when Nanite was enabled for this model in UE5, which reached up to 120 frames per second. To be fair, each model is 6 million polygons multiplied by 5 is totaling 30 million polygons. I'm going to push this even more and copy this 4 times and we're going to get a total of 20 earthquake models. Each model is 6 million polygons times 20 will give us 120 million polygons. The dip in FPS really shows now. And you can even see the graph start to spike up and down. Although my viewport doesn't seem like it's lagging much, probably because I have a pretty powerful video card, I'm running a single NVIDIA 4090 GPU, which is a monster in itself. It's not a Titan, but it's still very powerful. So I'm going to show you how to enable Nanite back on to this model. I'm going to right click the model, browse to asset. Now you're going to find the asset in the content browser, double click it. That brings up the static mesh panel. And here we're going to find the enable Nanite support. Toggle that on. And then we're going to save. Now you're going to have to close the static mesh panel and Unreal Engine will ask you if you want to apply the changes or you can actually hit the apply changes button. Either way, this will take a while so I'm going to fast forward this part. Now you're going to see these dark blobs or, or black spots are all over your mesh. You may or may not see this. It's Nanai trying to optimize the LODs and it took it a little too far. I'm going to show you how to get rid of these. Now go back to the static mesh panel. Now we're going to look for the fall back target under the Nanite settings. And we're going to click the drop down. You're going to choose relative error and then a new parameter will pop up. Now you're going to turn that parameter from one all the way down to zero. Save, close the panel, and apply your changes. This does take a while, so I'm going to skip this. When Unreal is done, you'll find that the dark blobs of shadows are removed. So let's go back to the viewport and check out the FPS. We can see here that it's extremely fast, and we are back to the same FPS that we started at the beginning of this video. Even with 120 million polygons with 20 earthquake models, this is the power of Nanite that I wanted you to see for yourself. 
I'm going to do a few comparisons. Let's compare this to another 3D application, my favorite Houdini. I love procedural, but sadly Houdini's viewport fell a little short for this one. It started to lag after loading just one earthquake model and you can see the obvious dip in frames per second on the Houdini viewport. So the earthquake model is something I grabbed from ZBrush's demo projects. This model has 3 million quads in Houdini, but Unreal Engine renders everything in triangles. So this model is going to have 6 million triangles in Unreal Engine. And in fact, whatever you import into UE, it'll get triangulated when you render it. I'm going to push this and copy the Earthquake model five times to test how well Houdini can handle the large number of polygons in the viewport. I'm using the copy and transform mode, so I need to specify the space between each copy. After specifying five copies, it took about eight seconds to execute. The viewport seems to be holding out well with a significant dip in FPS, but that's okay considering we are running 15 million polygons on the screen. Taking this up another notch, I'm going to copy this four more times and try to get 20 earthquake models. You can start to see how long it's taking Houdini to cook the next node. I did skip some of this because it took too long to get to the 20 copies. We can see that the viewport drops to 3 to 4 frames per second with 20 copies of Earthquake and 63 million polygons. I am still very impressed that the viewport is still relatively responsive and still very usable. Now you need to know Houdini has always been famous for its procedural workflow. Rendering wasn't always um, the best thing about Houdini until Karma came out, which is Houdini's built-in solution to replace its older mantra rendering engine. So I think it's only fair that I load this into Karma and give it a shot. It's doing much better when using Karma's CPU in the viewport, and we're hitting around less than 60 frames per second with significant dips when we move things in the viewport. Now I'm going to switch this over to Karma's XPU, which is still in beta mode. The XPU uses the GPU power instead of the CPU power. There was something funny going on in the viewport when I first switched it over, so I had to toggle the viewport in and out of Karma to get it to work, but it's still in beta, so that's very forgivable. You can see that we're hitting less than 90 frames per second quite easily, and it's way faster than before. Karma is definitely the future for Houdini. Next up, we have Blender, which actually held its own. But for some reason, the Blender viewport is capped at 27 frames per second on my machine. I could never get it past 27 frames per second. And there's an obvious rendering lag every time you pan or or zoom or move something in the viewport. What you're seeing here is Blender's Cycles rendering engine. So let me switch it over to Eevee. And you'll see Eevee is a lot more responsive in the viewport. And the display becomes a lot more smoother too. You don't have that static artifact indicating Blender is thinking and trying hard at, uh, that we saw in Cycles. Eevee is almost as instantaneous as Unreal Engine. But if you look more closely, you'll see that the model has a noticeable difference in quality between Cycles and Eevee. Everything is set to the default settings, nothing fancy. Eevee does have comparable speeds with Unreal Engine, which is very impressive, but it does look better in Unreal Engine. I personally think that it looks best in Cycles, but I'm a little biased. At the beginning in my early days of my channel, I used Cycles as my main rendering engine because it was free, and the quality was really good for the price tag at the time. It's hard to beat a free application that does so well. The last app I wanted to compare Nanite to is ZBrush. Earthquake is actually a demo project in ZBrush. I just exported the model from ZBrush and popped it into different 3D apps for comparison. Keep in mind, I have the legacy version of ZBrush because I bought it a million years ago before Maxon bought Pixelogic. So I have the perpetual license. I don't have the latest um, updates to ZBrush just because I have the legacy version and not the latest. Simply put, my ZBrush version that you see on the screen is quite old. At least it goes up to the time frame when Maxon took over. Anyways, ZBrush renders their meshes in quads. So this model has 3 million quads in ZBrush, but as you can see, there's no latency in the viewport. That's no surprise since Earthquake was created in ZBrush. If you ever use ZBrush to create 3D models, you'll find that it can handle millions and millions of polygons with ease. I'm duplicating the Earthquake model in ZBrush to test how many polygons ZBrush can handle. The results are very impressive. The viewport had absolutely no latency, 
but the operations took longer and longer to execute. ZBrush is based on layers, and to duplicate the earthquake model, I had to duplicate the layer and then merge it back down. The merging took longer as I increased the number of polygons to merge. Everything was going smoothly until I reached over 31 million polygons and trying to merge two sets of 10 earthquakes. So I'm trying to get 20 earthquakes. This resulted in crashing ZBrush with a warning that I ran out of RAM. I hope you see the power in Unreal Engine 5's Nanite system. The ability to handle obscene amount of polygons takes off a lot of pressure from 3D artists that are trying to focus more on creating the story side of the environment with high quality meshes that may surpass what was impossible before Nanite existed. If you're trying to put together a project for a client creating a castle in the middle of, let's say, a desert, the last thing you want to do on a deadline is retopologize or optimize the castle mesh. If you are dealing with high quality characters, you'll still need good topology if there's character animation. Just because the character deforms as it's animated. Nanite is a holy grail when it comes to things like environments and photogametry, but there are still some things that you still need to retopologize. 